Welcome back. It's to Plus Politics, and it is the Independence Day special. And we're looking at the issues relating to what the president said this morning. And uh, talking about what he said, he has indirectly blamed some of the Nigerians' uh, past leaders for the near destruction of the country, quoting him now. Although the president did not mention the leaders by name, he made direct reference to those who presided over Nigeria between 1999 and 2015, which are Olusha Gombasanjo from 1999 to 2007, late Umaru Yeredua from 2007 to 2010, and Good Luck Jonathan from 2010 to 2015. So our guess is as good as yours. This is probably President Buhari's first reaction to the latest criticism of his government by Olusha Obasanjo. Joining us to discuss this is Dipo Olayokun, a journalist, a senior one for that matter. Uh, he's joining us via phone. Good evening, Mr. Olayokun. Uh, hey, good evening. And we Happy also. Independence anniversary. And same to you. And uh, we also still have uh, Adeni Ikunu who is also a journalist, a broadcaster for that matter, and it's okay to also describe him as a public affairs analyst. So, good evening once again, or let me say good evening once again. Thank you very much. Uh, and, and, and let's hope network will be fair to us. Okay, we have some few more minutes yeah, to okay. discuss this. Let me start with uh, Dick Paul Ayoko. Um, I wish, okay, let me not give you my opinion on this. What's your take about the position of the president? Thank you very much, uh, Kay. And the uh, viewers, happy independence anniversary. I, I think uh, it will be uncharitable not to take the entire gamut of the president's statement. I, I, I think the president was trying to say that it is out of place for those who led us into where we are now to now be telling us that we have a problem. That message will say that some people have been coming out as if to say the problem of Nigeria started today. And that is why. Some people are saying, let us look at the message and not the messenger. But the president, just like very many people believe, that it will have been more honorable for those who created part of this problem, or those that when this problem first reared its head, they didn't do anything, for them to now be parroting, oh, there's a problem. I think it is not honorable. I think that's exactly what the president was trying to say in the morning. Okay. Okay. Let, uh, me, but you know, let, let, let me bring in Kunu to also make his opening remark on this. And I'll put it on graphics, some of the things he said. He said, um, no government in the past did what we are doing with such scarce resources. We have managed to keep the things going in spite of the disproportionate spending on security. Those in the previous government from 1999 to 2015 who presided over the near destruction of the country have, have now the impudence to attempt to criticize our efforts. I'm not going to add to that. What's well, your take on this? Yeah. Well, okay. Well, what, what, I, what I need to say to that first is that when you clamor to want to occupy a position in government. One of the things you do is to do your feasibility studies, more or less like um, when you decide to have a very big family, giving birth to as many as 10 children, and you know that your salary is 40,000 naira. You will not blame anybody, uh, you will not even blame the woman for being so prolific in producing your seeds. It is the same thing with this country. Um, there are decisive actions that should be taken if anybody feels that a previous administration didn't do the right thing. And that is the point I want to make. The punitive measures against alleged corruption and impropriety oftentimes ends um, at the heart of those that I don't understand. Because between that same 1999 and now, the president 
should try and tell me anybody, a major character, except of course you want to talk about Jolene Yame and Joshua Darie, who are sent to prison. You want to talk about all Jews of Kalu, what is their future prison until they overturn that decision. I want to know anybody, even from the northern region, that has gone to jail, but they just at some point went to jail, is from the south. Joshua Darige is from North Central. Johnny Yami from North Central. I want us, despite all the monies we've been finding, the coffers of past administration, don't forget that the Jonathan administration produced an abrupt Mayna that took in excess of two or three billion pensioners' money. And we saw such malfeasance characterize previous administration. So this is an administration that has the responsibility to do retroactive adjustments to how they have fleeced the resources of the Nigerian people. So I believe that the president might not have gone ahead to say previous administrations are responsible for lots of things and they are still criticizing it. He should use the long arm of the law to deal with those that have been found to do corrupt practices. If you look at, for instance, Dasuki, Dasuki has left, uh, so, uh, so talking about uh, uh, the former National Security Advisor, uh, he's been left there for so long that at times you begin to wonder, you kept him, man, has he gone to trial? The court has said he shouldn't. So these are issues. When you let such things linger, and you've not brought a man to trial, and there is no verdict, then you lose the opportunity to make a statement. The president said over a year ago, in one of the four, I think with the current governor of Central, the, the Godwin Mefele, that somebody in the previous administration expended $60 billion. If the president has found out that somebody took $60 billion, does it mean that, or wasted, I should say, wasted $60 billion, does it mean that the person who wasted $16 billion cannot be brought to books? Okay. Or is the president uh, who has the privilege and then he, of his office you, you to quite use a lot of the issues. mighty arm of the I want us to, yeah. I want us to uh, stay on this issue. Don't mind me. I'm, I'm, I have to be interjecting because I know you have so much to say and it's there okay. is little time. So back to you, Dick Paul. I, I, I want us to also look at it from this angle. Uh, my worry is I'm sick and tired of Oh, this administration did this, this administration did not do this. When are we going to come into a seamless transition where things are working? It doesn't matter what did this. Like someone asked during our, uh, uh, our, our special uh, broadcast that nobody knows who is the chairman of the electoral body in America. Nobody knows the governor that built most of the bridges in New York. Why is it all about what I did and what I did not do? Are we not there? In whose resources are this money even spent on fixing uh, the infrastructure that we boast about? Thank you very much, Karate. That's why I said there's a need for us. We shouldn't take ourselves, ourselves out of the bound or boundary of what the president was talking about. If, uh, if you like, if you digest the, uh, the speech. I, I cannot find where the man was, the president was blaming the past. The president was just doing a comparative analysis. That even those people who made this, how, how much impact did they make on Nigerians? While me, that is just with this little revenue, this is what I have been doing. And then more importantly, the president's speech, it's about those who fail to do what they should do. But their voice is now very loud in condemning what is happening. So there's a need for us not to look at the issue of whether he was blaming them or not. Now, back to the issue of in administration, because governance is a continuum. But unfortunately, the policies of our Nigeria is the policies of the next election. That is just across the board how do I win or how does my party win the next election? And so it's about, I have done this. That is why, whether you like it or not, some people are commending this president. That he that too, what we're used to, a situation where a government comes in, abandon all the projects it inherited from the past administration 
and start his own, which he will not be able to complete until the end, until the end of his tenure. And that's why we have so many abandoned projects. At least for this president, all the projects that have been commissioned are projects that were started by previous administrations. So that means we are having it something like a paradigm shift. But at the same time, the party, which is always a party of how to win the next election, we always want to bring glory. That is why anytime the current president goes to commission any project, you will see the PDP saying, we started it. So that is the problem, that is the politics we play here. And on the issue raised by Adeniyi, my very good friend, in the area of prosecution and punishing corruption, there's a little that the executive can do because it is the executive that will take the matter to court. And that's the judiciary, another arm of government. The president cannot arm to the judiciary to quickly do it. Okay. Even in part of the SPJ, that is administrative uh, Administration of Criminal Justice Act ah. that was uh, enacted in 2015, you will still hear that our lawyers, very brilliant lawyers, still maneuver, still manipulate. Okay. Because the essence of the SPJ is to fast track the process of uh, the perception of justice. Okay. But unfortunately, our Mr. Dipo, I'm so sorry. This, this is usually my challenge with the second topic. Um, the time is always running, <laughs> and the news has to come up in a few minutes from now. But let me quickly get uh, Kunu's uh, final take. I, 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 I wish I don't have to hear this next year, October 1, where a government will be blaming the past government, and we will be talking about what are the policies that are still not being implemented? Where are we not having implementable uh, laws? I well, know. I, I okay. think that the president can do a lot with uh, the president can do a lot with respecting the laws of the land. Olayoko, my friend as well, said something about the president not untwisting the judiciary, uh, but the president has not obeyed the verdict of the court as regards El Zagzaki and as regards Sambo Dasuki. The president has not respected the court of law. The president also did not recognize the position of the National Assembly when Ibrahim Mangu was kept there over two times until his debacle. That's not, uh, that doesn't seem to me as uh, the president really having enough regard where it matters for the, the rule of law. So I think that the president can do better. And I have to say in part here that the president, to, in part, that the president to a great extent has demonstrated um, what is expected governance with regards to the projects he has completed that the previous administration started. But you know, oftentimes when we now talk about this administration and its deal to the Nigerian people, I still believe that a lot more can be done um, especially the disaffection, for instance, at the height of, um, of, of the old pandemic and problems, the economic variables have not been in the most favor. Even if much of the changes you see are necessitated by the need for government to actually get the revenue in order, but I think that the people should get a better deal. Don't forget. Uh, that it's a fact that the president talked about uh, the regard of COVID, but what it did has the Nigerian nation done to the people with respect to palliatives to begin with uh, before it collects from the people. What okay. does the president intend that his administration do for Nigerians as concerns power? As for, for instance, I'm still paying the I'm paying the okay, new tariff already. Now you're attempting it's me to. Where you have, you are yes. tempting me to continue this conversation, but time is really, really yes. not on our side. I'm so sorry. I'm so, so Thank sorry. You very much. I know you okay. have so much Thank to you. tell me. Thank you. Uh, but your thoughts, trust Thank me, you. they are well driven home. Your points are clear. And likewise, Dikwa uh, Olayokun. Thank you for your intervention. Thank you. I'm, I'm not surprised. Two of you are Thank journalists, you. so nice. we expect a whole lot of balanced conversation, and that you've done for us tonight. Thank you so much. And to our viewers, thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. And when we return, 
I'll be giving you my take on these issues. Please don't go anywhere. As we celebrate 60 years of dependent independence to our leaders, past and present, yes, Mr. President, you hinted us recently that your ministers and aides should learn to blow their trumpet. So it is not surprising to see you tell us today that you surpass your predecessors. Why this view is not only subjective, in my opinion, it is a mark of averageness because we, the electorate, set the standard and we should be the one to score you. Please let us ask and ask ourselves, especially our leaders, these pertinent questions. Is this the country bequeathed to you at independence? Is this the hope promised 60, 60 years ago? If Nigeria were your father and at 60 unable to inspire hope in you, will you celebrate him? What should be the... What should the children in these pictures, whose present and future you have stolen, be celebrating for? A country where good deeds are condemned and evil celebrated is not celebrated. Where inequality is equal in the eyes of the leaders should seek truth first before honor. A country that dies daily yet live. If we must celebrate, Let's give the future back to the kids it belongs to. Wear sack clothes until the soil for the benefit of our future while begging for forgiveness. Otherwise, these hallowed shall become hollow and the executive shall be ransacked while the habitat shall become obiter. Here is my take on this issue and I will say Happy Independence Day to all Nigerians who believe in Nigerian dream. And one day, we shall achieve this dream. I remain yours truly, Coyote Ladende. Plus Politics returns tomorrow, same time, on the same station. And bye for now.